what are some moonshot ideas you think might make significant progress towards AGI? Or maybe in other ways, what are the big blockers that we're missing now? So basically, I am fairly bullish on our ability to build AGIs. Uh, basically, automated systems that we can interact with and are very human-like, and we can interact with them in the digital realm or physical realm. Currently, it seems most of the models that sort of do these sort of magical tasks are in a text realm. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, as I mentioned, I'm suspicious that the text realm is not enough to actually build full understanding of the world. I do actually think you need to go into pixels and understand the physical world and how it works. So I do think that we need to extend these models to consume images and videos and train on a lot more data that is multimodal in that way. Do you think you need to touch the world to understand it also? Well, that's the big open question I would say in my mind is if you also require the embodiment and the ability to uh, sort, of, sort of interact with the world, run experiments and um, have a data of that form, then you need to go to Optimus or something yeah. like that. And so I would say Optimus in some way is like a hedge um, <laughs> in AGI because it seems to me that it's possible that just having data from the internet is not enough. If that is the case, then... Optimus may lead to AGI uh, because Optimus, I, to me, there's nothing beyond Optimus. You have like this humanoid form factor that can actually like do stuff in the world. You can have millions of them interacting with humans and so on. And uh, if that doesn't give a rise to AGI at some point, like not, I'm not sure what will. Um, so from a completeness perspective, I think that's the uh, that's a really good platform. Uh, but it's a much more harder platform because uh, you are dealing with atoms and you need to actually like build these things and integrate them into society. So I think that path takes longer, uh, but it's much more certain. And then there's a path of the internet and just like training these compression models effectively uh, on uh, trying to compress all the internet. And uh, that might also give um, these agents as well. Compress the internet, but also interact with the internet. Yeah. So it's not obvious to me. In fact, I suspect you can reach AGI without ever entering the physical world. And the, which is a little bit more uh, concerning because it might that results in it happening faster. So it just fe yeah. feels like we're in, like in boiling water. We won't know as it's happening. I, I would like to. I'm not afraid of AGI. I'm excited about it. There's always concerns, but I would like to know when it happens. <laughs> yeah. Or and have like hints about when it happens, like. A year from now, it will happen, that kind of thing. Yeah. I just feel like in the digital realm, it just might happen. Yeah. I think all we have available to us, because no one has built AGI again, so all we have available to us is, uh, is there enough fertile ground on the periphery? I would say yes. And we have the progress so far, which has been very rapid. And uh, there are next steps that are available. And so I would say, uh, yeah, it's quite likely that we'll be interacting with digital entities. How will you know that we somebody has built AGI. It's going to be a slow, I think it's going to be a slow incremental transition. It's going to be product-based and focused. It's going to be GitHub Copilot getting better. And then uh, GPT is helping you write. And then these oracles that you can go to with mathematical problems. I think we're on a on the verge of being able to ask very complex uh, questions in chemistry, physics, math uh, of these oracles and have them complete solutions. So AGI to use primarily focus on intelligence. So consciousness doesn't enter into uh into it so in my mind consciousness is not a special thing you will you will figure out and bolt on i think it's an emergent phenomenon of a large enough and complex enough um generative model sort of so um if you have a comp complex enough world model uh that understands the world then it also understands its predicament in the world as being a language model mm -hmm. which to me is a form of consciousness or self-awareness and so in order to understand the world deeply, you probably have to integrate yourself into the world. Yeah. And in order to interact with humans and other living beings, consciousness is a very useful yeah. tool. I think consciousness is like a modeling insight. Modeling insight. Yeah, it's a, you have a powerful enough model of understanding the world that you actually understand that you are an entity in it. Yeah, but there's uh, also this, um, perhaps just the narrative we tell ourselves, there's a, it feels like something to experience the world. The hard problem of consciousness. Yeah. But that could be just a narrative that we tell ourselves. Yeah, I don't think, we'll, yeah, I think it will emerge. I think it's going to be something uh, very boring. Like we'll be talking to these uh, digital AIs, they will claim they're conscious, mm -hmm. they will appear conscious, they will do all the things that you would expect of other humans. And uh, it's going to just be a stalemate. <laughs> I, I think there'll be a lot of actual 
fascinating ethical questions, like Supreme Court level questions of whether you're allowed to turn off a conscious AI, mm -hmm. if you're allowed to build a conscious AI, mm -hmm. uh, maybe there would have to be the same kind of debates that you have around, um, sorry to bring up a political topic, but you know, abortion, uh, which is uh, the deeper question with abortion mm -hmm. uh, is what is life? Mm -hmm. And the deep question with AI is also what is life and yep. what is conscious? And I think right. that'll be very fascinating to bring up, it might become illegal to build systems that are capable, that, that, like of such level of intelligence that consciousness would emerge and therefore the capacity to suffer would emerge. And some, a system that says, no, please don't kill me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the Lambda computer, the Lambda chatbot already told um, this Google engineer, right? Like yes. it, it was talking about not wanting to die or so on. So that might become illegal to do that. Right. <laughs> I because otherwise you might have a lot of a lot of creatures that don't want to die and they will uh, <laughs> you can just spawn infinity of them on a cluster <laughs> <laughs> and then that might lead to like horrible consequences because then there might be a lot of people that secretly love murder and they'll start practicing murder on those systems I mean there's just I to me all of this stuff just brings a beautiful mirror to the human condition mm -hmm. and human yes. nature we'll get to explore it yes. and that's what like the best of uh, the Supreme Court, of all the different debates we have about ideas of what it means to be human. We get to ask those deep questions that we've been asking throughout human history. There has always been the other in human history. Uh, we're the good guys and that's the bad guys and we're going to, uh, you know, throughout human history, let's murder the bad guys. And the same will probably happen with robots. It'll be the other at first and then we'll get to ask questions of what does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to be conscious? Yep. And I think there's some canary in the coal mines, even with what we have today. Um, and uh, you know, like for example, these there's these like waifus that you can like work with, and some people are trying to like this company is going to shut down, but this person really like yeah. loved their waifu and like is trying to like port it somewhere else, and like it's not possible. And like I think like definitely uh, people will have feelings towards uh, towards these um, systems because in some sense they are like a mirror of humanity mm -hmm. because. They are like sort of like a big average of humanity yeah. in a way that it's trained. It, but we can, that average, we can actually watch. There's a, it's nice to be able to interact with the big average of humanity yeah. and do like a search query on it. Yeah, yeah, it's very <laughs> fascinating. And uh, we can also, of course, also like shape it. It's not just a pure average. We can mess with the training data. We can mess with the objective. We can fine tune them in various ways. Uh, so we have some um, you know, impact on what those systems look like. If you once we achieve AGI, um, and you could uh, have a conversation with her and ask her, uh, talk about anything, maybe ask her a question. What what kind of stuff would you would you ask? I would have some practical questions in my mind, like, uh, do I or my loved ones really have to die? Uh, what can we do about that? <laughs> <laughs> do you think it will answer clearly, or would it answer poetically? I would expect it to give solutions. I would expect it to be like, well, I've read all of these textbooks and I know all these things that you've produced. And it seems to me like here are the experiments that I think it would be useful to run next. And here's some gene therapies that I think would be helpful. And uh, here are the kinds of experiments that you should run. Okay, let's go with this thought experiment, okay? <laughs> Imagine that mortality is actually uh, pre like a prerequisite for happiness. So if we become immortal, we'll actually become deeply unhappy. And the model is able to know that. So what is this supposed to tell you, stupid human, about it? Yes, you can become immortal, but you will become deeply unhappy. If, if, the, if the model is, if the AGI system is trying to empathize with you, human, what is it supposed to tell you? That yes, you, you don't have to die, but you're really not gonna like it? Is that <laughs> is it gonna be deeply honest? Like there's a interstellar, what is it? The AI says like, humans want 90% honesty. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So like you have to pick how honest do I want to answer these qu practical questions. Yeah. I love AI inter interstellar by the way. I think it's like such a sidekick to the entire story but is, at is the same time of, it's like really interesting. It's kind of limited in certain ways, right? Yeah, it's limited and I think uh, that's totally fine by the way. I don't think uh I think it's fine and plausible to have a limited and imperfect AGIs. Is that a feature almost? As an example like it has a uh fixed amount of compute on its physical body. Mm -hmm. And it might just be that even though you can have a 
super amazing mega brain, super intelligent AI. You also can have like, you know, less intelligent AIs that you can deploy uh, in a power efficient way. And then they're not perfect. They might make mistakes. No, I meant more like, say you had infinite compute and it's still good to make mistakes sometimes. Like in order to integrate yourself, like, um, what is it? Going back to Goodwill Hunting, uh, Robin Williams' character says, "Like the human imperfections, that's the mm. good stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. Is isn't it? Isn't that the like we don't want perfect? We want flaws mm. in part mm. to to form connections with each other because it feels like something you can attach your feelings to the 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 flaws. Mm. And in that same way, you want an AI that's flawed. Mm. I don't know. I feel like perfection is. But cold. then you're saying, okay, yeah." But that's not AGI. But see, AGI would need to be intelligent enough to give answers to humans that humans don't understand. And I think perfect is something humans can't understand. Because even science doesn't give perfect answers. There's always gaps and mysteries and I don't know. I I, I don't yeah. know if humans want perfect. Yeah, I could imagine just uh, having a conversation with this kind of oracle entity as you'd imagine them. And uh, yeah, maybe it can tell you about you know, based on my analysis of human condition, uh, you might not want this. And here are some of the things that might-, might, might But might every be. every dumb human will say, yeah, 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 trust me. I can, give me the truth, I can handle it. But that's the beauty, like people can choose, uh, so. But then, <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> the old marshmallow test with the kids and so on. I feel like too many people uh, like can't handle the truth. Probably including myself, like the deep truth of the human condition. I don't, I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> like, what, what if there's some dark stuff? What, what if we are an alien science experiment, and it realizes that? What if it hack? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is the Matrix, you the, know, the, the all matrix. over again. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would. Pro what would I talk about? I don't even. Yeah, I. <laughs> uh, probably I will go with the safer scientific questions at first that have nothing to do with my own personal life. Yeah. And mortality, just like about physics and so on. Yeah. Uh, to, to build up, like, let's see where it's at, or maybe see if it has a sense of humor. That's another question. Would it be able to, uh, presumably, in order to, if it understands humans deeply, it would be able to generate, uh, yep. to generate humor. Yeah. I think that's actually a wonderful benchmark almost. Like, is it able? I think that's a really good point, basically. To, to um, make you laugh. Yeah. If it's able to be like a very effective stand-up comedian that is doing something very interesting computationally, I think being funny is extremely hard. Yeah. Because it's hard in a way, like a Turing test, the, the original intent of the Turing test is hard because you have to convince humans. And there's nothing, that's why, that's why when comedians talk about this, like there's this is deeply honest because if people can't help but laugh, and if they don't laugh, that means you're not funny. If they laugh, yeah. it's funny. And you're showing you need a lot of knowledge to create to create humor about like like you mentioned human condition and so on. And then you need to be clever with it. 